And not only do we have the power to do it, but the way that the internet leverages us, we can do it so much better than they can. But the classic model is, what is the success metric for them is ABC7, Cron4, CBS, every news channel, every newspaper in the Bay Area was contacting their app as you today, focusing on the idiot that climbed the fence over black rhinos, and then we were trying to, it's a good example, we were trying to push this grill over that happened uh, on the same day. So we had these two, one was a non-news event, and then we had the grill over. And for whatever reason, old media was just really interested in someone being stupid or so. So that was national news instantly yesterday, was someone being stupid or so. Um, so, so this is another example of like how new media gives us the opportunity to enhance what message is important to us. Um, so I basically jammed down uh, the director of public relations and marketing group and explained that we just need to do it. Like, it's free. We can do it in-house. Um, let's just put it together. So, so we did, and it's been incredibly successful, um, specifically the podcast. Now, now, in the way that we've grown, I think a lot of people are starting to feel this pain. It started as podcasting three years ago, and now it's kind of like, well, is that a, what do we tell people this video is? Is it a, is that a podcast? Is it a web video? It's on YouTube? What's going on? Um, so there, there's this weird, it's interesting to see how organic this growth is. You know, a year and a half ago, it was our podcast, and we were jamming this video down their throats via RSS feeds. Now we're uploading it to YouTube, and hopefully you've subscribed to our channel, and we're spreading that message uh, through paper collateral, through Twitter messages, through Flickr, Flickr photos. So um, we this on our website? So yeah, we embed this on our website. So when we go to so the website. Yeah, so if we go over to the Sue's website, This is our website. Um, we actually just recently redid this website, and it looks like we're gonna probably have to redo it again um, because they just we didn't we didn't lever. Uh, yeah, we need to have a page for the idiots. We didn't lever. We need to have a page for the idiots. Yeah, <laughs> don't come. Uh, <laughs> so, so we have this. You know, we have the little link over here because it's starting to get congested. So we're looking at redesigning yet again so that we can incorporate all this stuff. Um, once again, just like we've had the growing pains with uh, getting the podcast going, uh, the few of us that know anything about social media, and those of us that know stuff about social media are the ones that have personal Twitter accounts, have personal blogs, have personal Facebook accounts that we know how it functions because we're a part of it. Um, so those at the zoo that are the decision makers aren't really a part of the social community, so it's really hard. Not only do we have the power to do it, but the way that the internet leverages us, we can do it so much better than they can. But the classic model is, what is the success metric for them is ABC7, Cron4, CBS, every news channel, every newspaper in the Bay Area was contacting their app as you today, focusing on the idiot that climbed the fence over black rhinos, and then we were trying to, it's a good example, we were trying to push this grill over that happened uh, on the same day. So we had these two, one was a non-news event, and then we had the grill over. And for whatever reason, old media was just really interested in someone being stupid or so. So that was national news instantly yesterday, was someone being stupid or so. Um, so. So this is another example of like how new media gives us the opportunity to enhance what message is important to us. Um, so I basically jammed down uh, the director of public relations and marketing group and explained that we just need to do it. Like, it's free. We can do it in-house, um, let's just put it together. So, so we did, and it's been incredibly successful, um, specifically the podcast. Now, in the way that we've grown, I think a lot of people are starting to feel this pain. It started as podcasting three years ago, and now it's kind of like, well, is that a, what do we tell people this video is? Is it a, is that a podcast, is it a web video, it's on YouTube, what's going on? Um, so there, there's this weird, it's interesting to see how organic this growth is. You know, a year and a half ago, it was our podcast, and we were jamming this video down their throats via RSS feeds. Now we're uploading it to YouTube, and hopefully you've subscribed to our channel, and we're spreading that message um, through paper collateral, through Twitter messages, through Flickr, Flickr photos. Um, so, we website? so yeah, we embed this on our website. So when we go to so the website. Yeah, so if we go over to the Sue's website,
This is our website. Um, we actually just recently redid this website, and it looks like we're going to probably have to redo it again um, because they just, we didn't, we didn't lever. Uh, it's a page for the idiots. We didn't lever. You need to have a page for the idiots. Yeah, <laughs> don't come. Is anyone jumping in So. <laughs> So we have this, you know, we have the little link over here because it's starting to get congested. So we're looking at redesigning yet again so that we can incorporate all this stuff. Um, once again, just like we've had the growing pains with uh, getting the podcast going, uh, the few of us that know anything about social media, and those of us that know stuff about social media are the ones that have personal Twitter accounts, have personal blogs, have personal Facebook accounts that we know how it functions because we're a part of it. Um, so those at the zoo that are the decision makers aren't really part of the social community, so it's really hard to get down to you know take a step to make that happen. So we do the best we can. Hopefully with this next revision, we can really like slam a lot of social media in there because we've had a lot of um, success on these external sites, but if you have an internal site, not so much. We have, um, with the exception of an email marketing newsletter that we send out, we send it to about thirty thousand people. Uh, <coughs> We subscribe to it via email, and we try and uh, correlate our video over podcasts in with that marketing email. So we'll send it in, and it basically guarantees every one of our YouTube videos at least a thousand views on the first day or two. So uh, some success with that. So on this videos and podcast page is kind of what is receiving this. Um, where we'd like to go, we'd like to have more of a media-centric destination site on top of our internet site. So um, one that's going to be centered around video. As you see right now, this is um, just a basic content management system that our web person is doing, and she's just laying the videos over and over and over again. So it actually works. Um, the usability, people come over and they click the videos. You can be really annoying and slide down the page and start every single video and break your computer speakers. Um, or you can just scroll down like this and watch, you know, uh, each specific video. You see we've got a little mix. We were doing Blip TV for a while, um, primarily because they do widescreen. <laughs> that was literally the only reason we were uploading Blip. We the community there um, wasn't really, our content wasn't sticking very well. YouTube, on the other hand, has been um, incredibly successful. So now, since we're talking about videos, just play this video. So this is real, this is a 20 second video. <laughs> So this is a 20 second video and it's it's not much. It's basically a, a moving image. Um, there, there's not much action going on. We basically wanted to get it out as soon as possible and just and see what would happen basically. This is kind of our, our experiment with using the web 2.0 and social media to receive this stuff before old media. So people have a chance to see this gorilla on YouTube before anywhere else. Whereas right now, 6 o'clock news, 7 o'clock news, 8 o'clock news, is going to be taking advantage of um, similar video to this, much longer, so it'll be interesting to see what they end up choosing um, that we've uploaded uh, to our FTP site, and then they can just pull if they want. On Monday, December 8th, San Francisco Zoo welcomed its newest member, our baby boy gorilla, when he gave birth about midday. What you're watching here is vet and keeper staff doing their first check on him. You can see him, he's got a nice tight grip, he's sucking on fingers already, and he's about six pounds. So 20 seconds, right? That's, it'll be interesting to see how successful it is. We have 257 views for it already. And for those of you that use YouTube, the tracker is incredibly slow. So it'll be really interesting to see the count tomorrow morning. That's going to be a more realistic count of what's going on. Um, I'm actually, what, I'm, what I'd like to do is just log into our account here. Because I want to go into YouTube Insight, which is like the uh, demographic counter, if you guys are familiar with that. Because we were blown away when YouTube gave us access to that. We figured that everyone that was watching our videos, um, everyone that was watching our videos were kids, basically, is what we thought. Um, and we were incredibly surprised. <coughs> Let me pick a video that's been out for a little while. If you Dude. look at the Tiger Cup one, it'll just be all me. 